Yo, what's up, everybody? It is Wednesday, September, what, 25th. I'm here in Southwest Florida. We're waiting uh, for the hurricane to come. I think where I am, we're going to be hit more with tropical storm winds and a bunch of rain. And I think the, uh, the stronger impact, the hurricane impact is going to be felt more north around the Big Bend and into the Florida Panhandle. So, I mean, the sun is out right now. It's cloudy. You can see a little bit behind me. It's kind of overcast. But that's looking east, by the way. Hurricane's coming in from the west, but I mean, it's massive. It's huge. And those clouds are just being sucked in. This hurricane is still like hundreds and hundreds of miles away from here but it's sucking in a lot of clouds in these, you know, these circular bands. Uh, so we're supposed to get the winds kicking in by 8 p.m. tonight here, and that will continue through most of tomorrow, at least half of tomorrow, so uh, with a lot of rain, so it should be interesting. Anyway, I want to talk, I want to talk about gold, and the reason I want to talk about gold is because I, I think it will uh, help some of you learn something in a broader sense just about the mentality of trading and investing. I think some of you, you're just going to kind of blow off what I'm saying. You know, I know that. I've been in this business long enough to understand how people's minds work, how people operate when it comes to investing and trading. I mean, I, I just know that. I've been around it for a long time and I've been, I did all the mistakes that you could possibly do as a trader for the years and years and years that I've been, you know, trading and investing plus the years I spent on four different exchanges as an independent trader, et cetera, et cetera. But as you know, I've been having a, a kind of a cautious or I'll even say a bearish outlook on gold because I've been telling you guys that uh, what I'm seeing is that producers and banks you know, commercial interest in the gold market, they have been selling steadily into this rally. And so I'm not in it, okay? I'm not in it. It doesn't mean I haven't been in it. I mean, if you go back uh, to 2022, March, April, all of 2023, if you were a subscriber to my report, I kept saying, you gotta buy every dip in gold, you gotta buy every dip in gold. And I kept saying that until that wasn't true anymore. And it, it became untrue, at least as far as I'm concerned, when I started to see this very aggressive selling on the part of producers and the banks. And back, actually back in March 2022, when I believe gold was like around $1,600 an ounce, I said, and I did videos, and it was definitely in my report to my subscribers, I said, this is the smallest short position that producers had in gold. And remember, producers of a, a physical commodity, they're usually short that commodity as a hedge because that's how they lock in, they lock in their profit, you know, by selling forward. They own the underlying physical commodity. They sell futures forward to like lock in their profit. And they're very they're very good at knowing what their profit margin is because that's their business. And the longer they've been in business, the more they really understand very deeply, you know, their company and the profitability of their company. And they know when to sell. They also have their finger on the pulse of the of demand and supply. So I've, I've said in the past, and I will repeat once again, that I, I in a physical commodity, I never trade against the producer's uh, banks to a lesser extent, okay? Uh, because, you know, basically they're taking the other side of, they could be taking the other side of uh, producers or other commercial interests, but producers of the underlying commodity, I never go against them. So March 2022, all the rest of 2022, 2023, I kept saying every time there was a dip, you got to buy gold, you got to buy gold. And I kept saying that until it wasn't um, a play anymore. Now, here's the thing. You might say, yeah, but you missed out. You've been telling us that to, since 2400 and it's at 2600 or something. I don't know. 
Here's the thing I want to say, and this, this was really the, the core of my message that I wanted to put out there. I've been in this business long enough that, and, and I went, you know, I had to learn a lot of hard lessons. I never chase something. I never, ever chase something. If it gets away from me, and look, I could end up to be wrong. Maybe this rally goes to 5,000, okay? It doesn't phase me one iota. I will still, I never ever chase something and uh, especially in a situation where I see lots of speculative activity chasing the price in one direction or another. I just stay out and I'm totally, I don't have a FOMO, fear of missing out. I don't get any anxiety, uh, you know, any kind of stress. I stay out and the reason I could do that First of all, like I said, I you know in the past when I was uh, kind of a novice in this game, I would chase all the time, and I ended up losing money because I would buy high and I would sell low. And the other thing that I learned from being in this occupation for all the years that I've been in is that even though you may think like this is the greatest opportunity of a lifetime, look look at gold; it's making record highs every single day and you think there's never gonna be something like that again in your lifetime, believe me, there's gonna be something like that again in your lifetime. Maybe it's not gonna be in gold, maybe it'll be in silver, maybe it'll be in oil, maybe it'll be in, in stocks or one particular stock, or maybe it'll be in, it's gonna be in something. There's always gonna be an opportunity. And, and you know, when you understand that, it's very easy to just, you know, stay on the sidelines and wait patiently for another opportunity to come along. And that op what is that opportunity? That opportunity is, it starts in something where there's not a, a mass of people looking at the same thing. It starts out very, very, very unnoticed. This is, you know, when gold was at 1600, it was very, very unnoticed. And by the way, Maybe I notice is the wrong word because back then, in March 2022, when producers had the smallest short position in years, okay, telling you, screaming at you that they were bullish as hell on gold, you had a massive short position on specul by speculators, okay? So the exact inverse of what we're seeing right now. Right now, what we're seeing is producers have a very large short position and speculators have a very large long position in gold. Makes sense because I understand speculators, when the price runs up, people chase after it, they want it, they feel like they're missing out on it. You know, it's this behavioral thing where they, they feel like there's never gonna be another opportunity like this. Other, their friends, their colleagues at work, they're all getting into it, so they want it. Those are such bad reasons to do something that, you know, I mean, I can't even come up with, with kind of an analogy to show how bad that is. That That is just a terrible read Because so, everybody else is doing something, at least for me, maybe, maybe you think that's a great reason. If everybody else is doing something, I mean, I go so far in the other direction. I mean, I, my, I live my life like that, all right? It's not just about investing. You know all these people in summertime, they go over to, uh, they go to Italy, they go to Greece, they go to Mykonos, they go to, uh, you know, all these uh, tourist places. First of all, I've been there. I've been there, you know, 40 years ago in the 80s when it was really a lot less crowded, all right? I've been to Greece many times. I've been to Italy many times. I lived in Europe for 10 years. I've been to the south of France every summer. I just, I run in the other direction. You couldn't pay me any amount of money to go over there when there's hordes of tourists in the summertime. That's just one example. I'm a contrarian. I like to go where there's not a lot of people. Same thing when it comes to my investments. I like to look to try to find things where there's not a lot of people piling into them, or even better yet, as, as a, a, a financial player, as an investor, I like it when, you know, you get a situation where there's an extreme concentration in one direction. In other words, right now you have an extreme concentration 
bullish in gold by who? By speculators. Most of these people, they don't know anything, okay? They what may be watching TV commercials saying you gotta buy gold now because it's the greatest, you know, the greatest thing since sliced bread and it's just gonna keep going up. And I think over, you know, over time, a long period of time, it's probably true that the price of gold is gonna appreciate, uh, except for the fact that basically every single ounce of gold that was ever mined since the beginning of time still exists. I mean, it's being held in one form or another. Uh, but set that aside for a second. And who knows, uh, you know, Elon Musk was talking about mining asteroids. And, and, you know, Elon Musk, don't put it past him because he might come up with a way to do something like that. And then if they start doing that, you know, the price of gold is gonna go down to zero. But I'm, I'm not saying that's gonna happen. I'm just saying right now, I see lots and lots of uninformed speculators running into gold because uh, the Fed cut interest rates, you know, the funny thing is that inflation has come down, but the Fed has cut interest rates, so they, they keep finding a new rationale to prop it up. At the same time, I see producers, you know, every week selling into this, selling into this, selling into this, big, building a bigger and bigger short position. Are, are producers infallible? No, I mean, they could be wrong. For all I know, next week, they could start to cover that short position because suddenly they see... I don't know, there's something in the physical market that tells them it's just gonna keep on going, like just gonna keep on going. I don't care. I will not chase after that. I'm looking for other things right now. Things that are not so obvious. Things that are just at the very beginning of their cycle. That's how you make money. You know, if, how much money do you need, folks? If I'm long gold in 2022, and basically I was long way before that, okay? But I, 2022 was another great buying opportunity at that March low of 1600. And I rode it up, let's say, till over two, you know, 2000, 2100. How much money do you need? How much money do you need? I mean, do you have to, I, I went after, I, I, um, I said this in a previous video, like the same thing with stocks, all right? Since October 2022, I've been telling you, I've been making these videos every single day. Market's going up. Fiscal is strong. We're going to make new record highs every single day for two years. And now it's like, I'm telling you, fiscal drag is going to increase. The Fed's cutting interest rates. Interest income transfers are going to go down. But you gotta jump in for that last little, I mean, how much money do you need? You gotta be a little bit smart when you do these things. And I don't find it to be very smart to just chase after what everybody else is doing. I mean, if you can't sit quietly and patiently and observe with, with some intelligence, and some detective work, so to speak, about, you know, where is the next opportunity? Where is there some place that nobody is looking at right now? Do I have the correct understanding or am I just jumping in with what everybody else is doing just because of the fact that everybody else is doing it? I mean, ask yourself these questions. And if you can't hold back, if you feel like you have to run after something because everybody else is doing that, then, you know, that is not a strategy that is going to work out. That's just a highly emotional lack of self-control, not knowing what you're doing, just flying by the seat of your pants, hoping that it's going to work out. That's not a strategy. And that's not a way to behave that is going to, to foster, you know, a, a, a disciplined approach, to have that disciplined approach, to do the right things consistently over and over, to build that discipline, to build that resilience, that patience, that, that uh, you know, uh, knowledge and understanding, the tools you're really gonna use to succeed over the long term. 
Not like going to Vegas and rolling the dice and hoping this is going to work out and hey, everybody else is putting the, the, their money down on this number. I think I'm going to do the same thing. What is that? What is that? That's not something that's going to help you out. So anyway, I stick by my guns. Uh, the, the rate cuts are not going to end up being bullish for gold. They're bullish for gold now because what happens with these rate cuts is that they, they, they trigger the reaction function of people who have this belief that rate cuts are somehow inflationary when they're not. And um, so you get the, the, the tr it's triggered. They all rush into it. You get the pop, you know, it could last several days, several weeks, even several months. But then once that initial, initial reaction is over, the true fundamentals are going to start to take hold. And that's a slow down. And you know, look, I've said this many times that the, the real indicator for gold is not inflation. Gold's not an inflation hedge. It's a growth. It's like an industrial commodity. It's, it's economically sensitive. If you have an economic slowdown, gold's going to go down. I'm telling you that right now. And, and you could look at any chart you want and kind of, you know, line it up in a way that makes it seem like what I'm saying is wrong. But we'll see. You know, when it happens, I'll come back on here and I'll say, I don't want to say I told you so, but I'm going to say I told you so that was going to happen. All right. So as long as I'm seeing these guys selling the the the, uh, the producers are selling this stuff, banks are selling this stuff, uh, and don't forget that banks price their loans if they're lending to a miner, a gold miner, they're pricing their loans off of you know where they see gold going, okay? Because they got to be protected, and if they're se the banks are selling right now, they're like hedging their bets in a sense on these loans that they're making to, to gold miners. That's another thing you got to pay attention to. So anyway, that's it for today. Uh, please like and subscribe. And if you get a chance, go to my website, pitbulleconomics.com. Sign up for a 30 day free trial to MMT Trader. See you tomorrow. And um, I'll let you know how this hurricane deal is going. Bye.